Today, let's discuss the number one sign of iodine overload. The symptoms from not having enough iodine are just as bad as getting too much iodine. Iodine is a trace mineral, meaning that it's needed in very small, tiny amounts. So we're talking about micrograms, not milligrams. So the amount of iodine you need on a regular basis uh, should be between 150 to 200 micrograms per day, but you don't need a lot. Uh, there is an iodine supplement called potassium iodide, which is meant to take as a protection against some type of nuclear radiation exposure. And potassium iodide should not be taken on a regular basis as your iodine supplement. Now, I will say that it's more common not to get enough iodine. A lot of people are deficient than to get too much iodine, but you should be aware of certain things that can happen if you take too much. Now, since we are on the topic of iodine, we should probably talk a little bit about Hashimoto's, okay? That is an autoimmune condition. It's a hypothyroid condition. It was discovered by a doctor out of Japan, thus his last name, Hashimoto's, which is a Japanese name. And by the way, as a side note, Japan has more Hashimoto's disease than any other place in the world. And I think because of this one point, Hashimoto's is really not caused by an iodine deficiency but can be aggravated or even triggered with taking too much iodine. And in Japan, they do consume a tremendous amount of iodine from seaweed, sea kelp, seafood, et cetera. But I do want to point out, if you're taking like 150 to 200 micrograms of iodine, you're usually not going to trigger Hashimoto's. It's when you take a lot of iodine that you could potentially trigger it. Now, if there is something that triggers Hashimoto's, uh, what can happen is the thyroid can start producing a lot of hydrogen peroxide. And then hydrogen peroxide is uh, very, very um, irritating and uh, corrosive to the thyroid gland. But normally our bodies have enough neutralizing factors to buffer that hydrogen peroxide. And one being selenium, which by the way, selenium is really good for Hashimoto's. It's also necessary to convert T4 to T3, which is the active form of the thyroid hormone. But the selenium is also like a precursor to glutathione, which is the liver's uh, antioxidant. So probably what's happening with Hashimoto's is we have a situation where we don't have enough selenium or glutathione, or we have a weak liver, or even we have some problem in the gut. That's where your, your immune barrier is. And if there's some type of leaky gut situation or increased permeability in the gut because there's inflammation, that's usually where Hashimoto's starts. And this is why there's such a huge association between things like gluten and Hashimoto's. But what you need to know is that Hashimoto's is not an iodine deficiency and too much can actually trigger a Hashimoto's situation. There's also some other factors that I just want to just briefly touch on. Um, with the advent of DNA testing, you can now get your DNA tested and find out where your weaknesses are. And if there's some type of mutation in your genes, like it's called a polymorphism, you can also have a weakness or a higher risk factor of getting an autoimmune disease, especially to your thyroid, and that's called Hashimoto's. So for example, if you have this gut issue, you're consuming a lot of gluten, and you're low in selenium, it, you could be much greater at risk for getting Hashimoto's than someone else. But I think also um, hypothyroidism could be a protective mechanism, some type of compensation from having too much iodine. Uh, that's just one theory that I have, just because too much iodine could be very um, damaging to the body. All right, now let's dive into the number one symptom that someone would have relating to getting too much iodine, okay? The number one symptom is a highly irritable energy that keeps you from sleeping, okay? So let's say, for example, you're just, you're in this flight or fight mode and you just, your body is just on edge and you just can't sleep. That is usually one of the first signs that of an iodine excess. Now, you could also have that symptom from other things like low B1, for example, and being stressed because your adrenals in overdrive. But just realize that too much iodine can activate the thyroid, which can then activate too much sympathetic nervous system. 
too much flight or fight. And so that's really one of the first signs that occurs with taking too much iodine. Here's some other ones. Fast pulse rate, okay? Like your pulse rate is just boom, boom, boom. But again, that can also come from other things like low potassium or low vitamin B1. Another symptom of excess iodine could be atrial fib or heart arrhythmias in general. Another one could be heat intolerance or diarrhea or hand tremors, or your temperature is increasing, but you don't necessarily have a, a, like an infection fever. It's just your body is just hotter. Or you could even have bone loss or osteopenia, which is a pre-osteoporosis situation. Or another one would be a loss of menstrual cycle or excessive sweating, or even, and this is rare, but you can have what's called a thyroid storm. All of these symptoms could potentially be you have too much iodine. All right, so what is someone going to do if they have symptoms of too much iodine? Well, the most important thing is to find out uh, where it's coming from and start to eliminate iodine from your diet or your supplements, okay? So let me just kind of go through a list of um, sources of iodine. Now, there's a couple things I want to mention related to getting too much iodine. Uh, first of all, maybe you're taking way too much sea kelp or seaweed in your diet, or you're consuming a lot of iodized salt or a tremendous amount of seafood, or it could be a combination of several supplements you're taking with too much iodine. So you want to read the back of the label and just start counting up how much iodine you're really getting. And if it's over like 300 micrograms, you should start cutting back. All right. And the other question is, um, is there a blood test or some test to know if we have too much iodine? Okay. Well, there's a couple things in past videos. I talked about a skin test where you can drop a little bit of iodine on your skin, put a little patch on, and then see if it gets absorbed or not over a period of time. And that's one test. But the problem with that test is it, it really only tells you um, recently what's going on in your body, there's a, a much more accurate test to do. And that test is a urine test. And if I'm not mistaken, it can even be a home test. Okay. And I'll put a link down below to see if you can just get this test ordered and you can send it right to your house. But the test is a urinary collection test where you send your urine off to the lab and they're measuring something called urinary iodine to creatinine ratio. And when you get that test done, you want it below a hundred micrograms per gram. Okay. If it's above a hundred micrograms per gram, that means there's some source of iodine that you're taking unknowingly that's keeping your iodine a bit too high. All right. So that's that. Now, if you have Hashimoto's, okay, I have a lot of videos on this, but I wouldn't recommend taking extra iodine. Instead, I would take selenium, okay? Now, preferably you get it from your food and the food that has the highest selenium is Brazil nuts. Maybe you just take a couple of those per day. That will be enough. Or you just get a supplement and only take what's on the back of the label. So don't take a lot of selenium because selenium is also a trace mineral. So you just need sufficient amounts. So if you have Hashimoto's, there's a couple of really key points here. Uh, there's a lot more to know about it, but I would definitely take selenium, okay? I would also take vitamin D, very important. Vitamin D has been shown to decrease the antibodies in Hashimoto's, okay? And I would recommend taking 20 to 30,000 IUs per day. And lastly, I would take uh, a good natural source of B1 because B1 can also help. If you notice a lot of these symptoms also cross over, to almost mimicking a B1 deficiency. And so these symptoms can be improved with B1 too, especially if you have this sympathetic nervous system dominance. Now, also another hidden source, which is probably not your situation, is consuming a lot of bakery goods, okay? Or breads or pastas, things like that. Because a lot of times they use iodide as one of the dough conditioners, which have something called iodate, which is a form of iodine. And another thing I want to bring up, uh, when you take um, like uh, purified bile salts, okay, which is in my gallbladder formula, or it's in a lot of other products, you're taking this bile, uh, or even in a form of Tudka. If you have hyperthyroid symptoms, just realize that can make things a little bit worse because 
that increases the conversion through the liver from T4 to T3. So that could be a really minor point, but it can just contribute to this problem if you have too much iodine. However, if you need more iodine, that would be a great thing to take because like I said before, it's more common to have a deficiency of iodine than it is to have too much iodine. And also, if you have Hashimoto's, I'm not saying to, to completely you know, have zero amounts of iodine in your diet, but just realize that you never want to correct these things necessarily with just a single um, element like a mineral. Realize that in nature, it always comes in complexes. So if you are deficient, for example, in iodine, uh, taking sea kelp would be better than just taking a single iodine because in nature, it never comes that way. And if you do use a single mineral to correct something, uh, work with uh, either your doctor or a healthcare practitioner to help get the levels just right because it's a bit complex. And also realize that 80% of the conversion from T4 to T3, the active form of the thyroid hormone, occurs through the liver and the kidney. So if you have a thyroid problem and it's not Hashimoto's, for example, I mean, the problem could be in your liver or it could be in your kidney that's creating this problem. So it's not always just a thyroid issue. Now, there's a really good book that I recommend if you have a thyroid problem or you want to get a lot more information about the thyroid gland itself. It's by the author Isabella Wentz. And she's written several books about the thyroid. The one I would recommend would be Hashimoto's Protocol. Now, since we're on the topic of iodine and thyroid, I think it's very important to understand other factors that can affect the thyroid, especially in the conversion factors from T4 to T3. And for that information, I put this video up right here. Check it out.